Good morning and welcome back to this edition of Island Outlook on this station of Connoisseur Media Long Island. I'm Leanna Carlson, joined this morning by Thomas Abadi, who is the Executive Director of St. Vincent de Paul of Long Island. Good morning. Good morning. Also, James Claffey is here. He is the Director of Programs and Conference Concerns for St. Vincent de Paul of Long Island. Good morning to you. Good morning. And finally, Terry Zenobio, who is the Conference Coordinator of St. Vincent de Paul of Long Island. Good morning. Hello. So I want I want to start off with pretty much the basic question. What is St. Vincent de Paul of Long Island? Is it a church? What is it? No, we, we work uh, along with the church. We're not part of the church. Uh, the Society of St. Vincent de Paul is actually an international organization. It's the largest Catholic lay organization in the world. And uh, we are representatives of the branch in Rockville Center, Nassau, Suffolk County on Long Island. So uh, what does St. Vincent de Paul do? What type of work do they do? Well, there's actually three goals for all of our members. Uh, the first is to grow in our own spirituality through the second goal, which is to reach out and help people, usually with their most immediate pressing material needs. And then thirdly, uh, to develop a, a, and experience the whole fellowship and friendship as they work together to try to address people's needs. So it's really a helping agency. Okay, so it is an agency yeah. then. Yeah. Okay. Agency, uh, covering, as Tom said, Nassau and Suffolk counties. Yeah. And we work through our volunteer, our volunteers uh, that are parish-based groups of volunteers. So we're actually in 54 of the Catholic parishes on Long Island as we speak. We're always trying to get into more parishes, but we're in 54 as we speak. So it's not a church, but it is an agency that um, is driven by, I guess, the the principle of faith and helping. Absolutely, yep. that's yes. it exactly. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, that, <laughs> hey, I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> exactly, we're we're based in parishes, like Jim said, but our members come together um, on a fairly regular basis, uh, usually once or twice a month, and they decide together the services that they can provide to those people in need. Basically, through our main, um, I guess, work in ter- is called a home visit, and they go out in twos, and they meet the people where they're most comfortable to provide them with the utmost respect and the opportunity to really kind of Um, talk with them about how they can help the most. So is it like other agencies in the sense where, um, you know, there's this outreach where they reach out to St. Vincent de Paul and then it's kind of um, distributed out with these, the volunteers, or is it where somebody has to be a part of the parish, the faith to receive the help? No, not, not at all. Our motto is need, not creed. So the people may be referred to a St. Vincent de Paul. We refer to it as conference, but it's kind of like a chapter. And then once that referral takes place, the Vincentians, our volunteers, go to the person in need and talk with them about what we could help with. And that might be financial. It might be um, furniture, clothing, um, really car insurance, utilities, there's a wide variety of places we can help. And there so, are about 1,200 of these volunteers out there. Right. You had mentioned that this is a chapter of a much bigger organization, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. So how long has St. Vincent de Paul been around? Well, it was founded in 1833 in France. And, uh, and an interesting thing is, as Terry mentioned, ever since then, the foundational activity and our primary focus is the home visit. So let me make a point here. You know, Long Island is blessed with many really good nonprofits. What distinguishes us a bit, however, is the home visit. Mm-hmm. We prefer not to have people come and form lines and wait and fill out all kind of forms to get help and meet people across a desk. Our volunteers go to visit people in their home. So we go to them as a sign of respect, as Terry said. And in their own turf, people can more easily tell their story and explain why they're in the situation where they're in. And so we, we feel that, that that's really what distinguishes us from a lot of the other really good nonprofits that Long Island has. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up because, you know, Connoisseur Media is a friend of many charitable organizations yeah. on Long Island. And we hear and see about different ways that different agencies facilitate those types of things. And, you know, more recently in the past few years with some of the issues that we've had with the economy, uh, Superstorm Sandy, people that wouldn't normally... Um, ask for help mm-hmm. are kind of being um, forced to 
to ask for help because they really need it. And I feel that, and, and the tone that I get, and you can tell me if I'm wrong or right, is that a lot of people uh, don't ha- have a pride issue and that they don't want mm-hmm. to ask for help and That's they don't right. want to be visible yep. going to a, an agency asking for help. So you're saying what you do is different in that you take that element out of it for them by showing up in the home. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. And, and I think, you know, um, very often we've helped people, as you said, who may not have necessarily asked for help. You know, they come to the church possibly for food initially, but when they meet a St. Vincent de Paul volunteer in their home, we now get a look at the home and say, well, not only do they need food, but now they might need beds for their children. Or, you know, they do have an outstanding bill on the coffee table. So we're kind of able to get the whole picture and really provide people with a chance to kind of get themselves back on their feet. So by the volunteers going into the home, it's not so much that the person in need needs to ask for the help. The help they need is seen. Exactly. Right. The mm-hmm. lights might be out. The refrigerator could be empty. You know, the house might be cold. And or kids, we can, we kids sleeping that. on the floor. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no beds. And how prevalent is that? Let's really paint the picture uh, for Nassau and Suffolk. Because I think that a lot of people have certain ideas about areas that where, okay, yes, that's more common. Um, you know, different communities where, yes, that might be more um, common. What, what's the real deal? What's really going on? What's the climate? I, I think there's a mix in, in every community. Because uh, we, we go all over, and uh, the face of the people we help has changed greatly, like you said before, the economy and Sandy. Uh, so we're helping people that, you know, they never thought they would need help. We, you know, we never thought we'd be helping them, but uh, things have happened. So I think there's a big change in the, the people we are helping the in the past couple of years. You know, a lot of people from different parts of the country, they think that Long Island is all the Hamptons. Mm. And, and it's, the truth is there's many, many more people in need than a lot of people would ever guess on Long Island. And like Tom said, the economy and then Sandy really put a lot of people behind the eight ball. So people, even working people, sometimes can't make it through the whole month without some maybe some food uh, supplement, you know, toward the end of the month. Their, check, their paycheck just doesn't stretch that far anymore. So that's where we, we were able to help. And one of the blessings, too, is on Long Island, you, have, you do have some wealth. Uh, but the people are very generous. And yeah, so with nine eleven, you saw it with Sandy. Everybody uh, that could helped whatever they could, clothing, money, whatever it took. People are very generous on Long Island. I have a question about the volunteers that go into the home. How are these people qualified to assess the situation? Are they social workers who are volunteering their time, or is it just somebody? You know, I, I would I would hope, and you know, maybe you can prove me wrong that it is somebody that has a certain level of qualification, at least in the assessment round, if if you want to call it that. Well, you know, we do have a fairly extensive um, formation program, um, and certainly um, the diocese requires every volunteer in the parish to go through a Virtus training. Um, So they start with that, um, the Virtus training, and then Jim and I, part of our responsibility um, as staff members is to provide a certain amount of training and formation to the volunteers. Very often, people do come with their own skill set. You know, it may be social workers, teachers, nurses, but we also have accountants and attorneys and tradesmen. It's really, you know, the person who wants to kind of um, see their faith in action. Um, and we provide the additional training of them there in the home visit, how to interact with people. But it, it's really intrinsically motivated for the most part. Mm. And all of the volunteers, they are people who are part of the different parishes that you partner with. So let's say, for instance, I'm not part of one of the parishes. Can I still volunteer with St. Vincent de Paul of Long Island? Absolutely. Absolutely. We um, never turn a volunteer down, no matter what age or, or as I said, what skill set. We have young Vincentian groups popping up all over the island. Um, we are we can be school based as well for the youth. So if you have an interest, we can find something for you to do. We, we also have associate members that mm-hmm. people that don't really want to go to all the meetings and be part of all that, but help in different ways. So there's a lot of way. You know, <clears throat> like Turkey. Like Terry said, there's always a way people can contribute their time and talent, and we'll try to find that for them. So they don't have to necessarily have specific credentials, and they don't have to necessarily be a member of one of the parishes that you partner with. Do they have to be Catholic? No. 
No, they don't. To be an associate member, like Jim said, you do not have to be Catholic. If you want to hold um, a position like an officer, um, then, you know, that would be a stipulation. Yes. So let's go back to we talked a little bit about Superstorm Sandy. Um, You know, it's it's what, two years almost now after Mm -hmm. the fact. And a lot of us have moved on. But I think that the surprising thing is that there's still a lot of us who are really suffering, rebuilding. How has St. Vincent de Paul of Long Island been there for those people in need? And how do they continue to be there? Well, Sandy uh, was a learning lesson for a lot of nonprofits, I think, on the island. Uh, We are not traditionally first responders, okay? Uh, With Sandy, we became a first responder. We were learning day by day, figuring things out. And uh, because it was so vast, obviously, and the need, and the needs keep shifting. You know, at first it was generators, it was food, it was blankets, clothes, somewhere to stay. And then it kind of shifted to, you know, helping them out financially, you know, car payments. And now it's, it's getting to the point where a lot of the agencies are running out of money. And they're dropping out of the scene of, uh, to help people, the Sandy victims. So you got lo- uh, f- less agencies than we did in the very beginning. And the need is, at this point, getting greater because the, the need is to rebuild a house. We have recently uh, partnered up with Rebuilding Together, uh, led by Bob Ellis, and we've pooled our resources. And we've been fortunate enough, we've rebuilt 14 houses. We've got a few more on, uh, on, in the works right now. Uh, but unfortunately, that money is drying up, too, even for us. So we'll, we'll keep going as long as we can to get people back in their houses. But there's still a lot of people that are frustrated with the system, how everything worked. They, they, and they've gone through the money, and they can't get back in their house. That's Thomas Abadi. He's the executive director for St. Vincent de Paul. When it comes to resources... And you're saying, you know, for certain things that, you know, you're running low. How does St. Vincent de Paul thrive? How are they able to provide these resources? Well, well, Sandy, we had a lot of great projects. You had the McCormick Foundation. You had um, the Red Cross. Uh, we had national donations coming in from around the country. Uh, we have also had the uh, Robin Hood Foundation. Mm-hmm. And like I said earlier, a lot of people in Long Island are very generous. We had a lot of local donations also. So, but that, the income, money coming in for Sandy is waning. So, so uh, if somebody does want to be able to contribute locally, yeah. how do they do that? They can contact us through our website or, or give us a call. Uh, we we uh, keep doing appeals for Sandy and uh, hopefully the money will keep coming in because it's really needed. It's going to be needed for a long time. James Claffey is the director of programs and conference concerns. What does that role mean for you and for St. Vincent de Paul? Well, Terry and I have to keep a a close eye on the 54 conferences. They're all a bit independent in the way they function, but we try to provide uh, some oversight, some coordination, formation, certainly. So we're constantly offering programs to, to, uh, to prepare the new volunteers we get for their work. And we're constantly trying to start new conferences in different parishes. We have a couple. We're always at different stages of conversation with several pastors sort of simultaneously about possibly starting a conference in their parish. We've learned a little bit about some of the roles that St. Vincent de Paul of Long Island plays in Long Islanders' lives. Um, You know, whether it's providing, um, you had said initially, you know, the material things. What are some of those other material things? You had mentioned furniture. Is there clothing? And how do those things come together? So we have um, three thrift stores across the island, um, one in Garden City Park, Huntington Station, and Huntington. And they are really the engine that kind of fuels a lot of the work that we do because the conference members are able to access products that are um, offered in the thrift stores. We always give clothing. Um, clothing is a given. Um, we offer it free to people in need. And then we also have the ability to provide them with furniture as they need it. Um, and then as people enter our thrift stores, they have the opportunity to buy affordable goods and all the proceeds go back into our mission. So the thrift stores are a key piece um, to the work that we do here on Long Island. And are but- there food pantries as well? We, in seven parishes, we operate the, totally the food pantry. And we, I think we assist in like 28 other food pantries that the parish basically runs with the help of the St. Vincent de Paul volunteers in that parish. When we first started talking, we mentioned one of the missions of St. Vincent de Paul is to utilize faith to help give back. 
How important has that been in what you do for the people that you help? Mm. Do you find that people are, um, do, do they end <laughs> up giving back once the services are no longer required? What, type, what, do you, what stories do you see with that? Mm. Yeah, we, you know, it is a faith response, as you said. Uh, the Our people, off, th this is a concrete way to live the gospel and to put their faith in practice. So if faith is not, doesn't remain theoretical, but actually has a practical application in real life, that's what our volunteers love about the society. It gives them a real avenue to So you're not just talking the talk, you're walking the exactly, walk in a sense? That, exactly, that's the whole point. And, and people, but many times our volunteers tell us they feel they actually get more out of this work than they're able to actually give, which is kind of amazing. And we have a lot of, of cases where people, years later, back on their feet, financially independent, will write a check to the society, will send in a note, say, I'll never forget, you know, what the same incident of all did for me when I was in real trouble. So please use this to help other people. It's really wonderful. It's a cyclical kind mm -hmm. of, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about, um, you had mentioned about the youth groups and the projects that they do throughout the year. What are some of those, Terry? Well, you know, we have to be conscious of the fact that when you are dealing with youth, there is an element of safety. So we can't actually bring them to a home visit. Sure. But what we try to do is offer them an experience that's similar. You know, meeting other people in places that they call home. So a lot of the times our youth groups will volunteer at a soup kitchen and meet homeless um, people. Another time they might enter a skilled nursing facility and do some activities with the elderly. So so they're getting the experience of what it's like to kind of meet people in their own environment, um, but it, it's in a little bit more structured and safe environment. And so this format has been working for St. Vincent de Paul for many, many years. Where do you see <clears throat> the society going in the next five years, 10 years, because it's changed a lot in just the past two years, mm -hmm. as we mentioned, looking back on Superstorm Sandy. Well, you know, most people on Long Island, they, they recognize us for the clothing bins, the furniture trucks that are on the road every day. And uh, traditionally, we give out over $10 million a year to approximately 225,000 people. And, you know, we hope to keep continuing that. Something we spoke about earlier was volunteers. Uh, as people get older, they, they slow down, and the younger people are not filling their shoes as quickly as uh, we need. Mm-hmm. So there will be a need for volunteers down the road. So we will be changing. We're not sure where it's going to take us at this point, but uh, there will be a, a new look to us eventually. If somebody finds that they are in need of help, do they just show, and they are maybe not aware of you through the parish that they may or may not attend, mm -hmm. how do they get that help? Because usually it is off of a referral with most agencies. What, what's the first step mm -hmm. for them? You know, I'm glad you asked that question. We, I think we would not want to give the impression that we have unlimited resources. Mm -hmm. Basically, since everything for us begins with that personalized face-to-face -face contact in the home visit, we really can really only assist where we have those volunteer groups. So unfortunately, there are places on Long Island where we're not able to assist greatly. I mean, mm -hmm. people are always welcome to shop at our stores, our thrift stores, and they always find discounted prices, et cetera. But we, there are places where we can't do an awful lot because we don't have volunteers there. Mm -hmm. So it really does begin by somebody, if it's a parish where we are present with a volunteer group, they'll either contact some of this parish secretary, the pastor, and then word gets sent back to the volunteer group, okay. and they take it from there. So, so those somebody should go to somebody within the parish. Right. Mm -hmm. Or the other option is they can always call our office oh, in Bethpage yeah. Yeah. Um, because we obviously are kind of the central council and we know where we have volunteers and where we don't. So if they called the and office then, number directly, we're able to let them know. And they might feel a better sense of anonymity, too, you know, if they're not as comfortable going to the parish mm -hmm. and, and things like that. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. What is that phone number, Terry? So it's 516 822 Three one three two. Now, James, you had just mentioned about you know shopping at the thrift stores and the furniture. Is that something that's open to the public year round, or is that strictly for people who are receiving aid from St. Vincent? Oh no, very much open to the public. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, my wife and I have shopped there. I think we all have. Right, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, our two big thrift stores are uh, Jericho Town Park, one in Garden City, one in Huntington Station, and the one in Garden City has been there since the fifties. And uh, you get quite a mix of shoppers coming in. You get people looking for the antiques. You get people coming there looking for affordable furniture. 
Uh, there's clothing there. It's a nice mix. We, we duplicate that in uh, the Huntington store also. It's, it's an adventure. It's like the thrift shop and uh, the, uh, the uh, people go to flea markets. Uh-huh. It's like going to an indoor flea market, you know, and, but it's nicely done. And if somebody uh, wants to contribute to the thrift stores, that's an option as well, right? Absolutely. We, we rely on the uh, donations for, uh, to survive day to day. Like Terry said earlier, the furniture that we sell in the stores uh, it just goes to further the mission. We give away a lot of beds every year uh, free of charge, and those are new beds, new blankets, new pillows, new sheets. We're not doing any refurbished beds, so it costs money to buy those. So the sales generated by the stores enables us to keep buying all of the things we need, dresses, whatever it might be, to give away free of charge to the people. Do you have any corporate sponsors that ever um, help contribute to St. Vincent de Paul to help offset that cost of investing in things that, you know, you can't refurbish or that you choose not to refurbish? Not really, no. Yeah. Is that something that the society would like to see happen? Oh, sure. We're always reaching out to people in the community. <laughs> we're talking I mean, to a, I mean, a, I mean, a couple million people here, so let's use yeah, this yeah, as an opportunity, yeah, yeah. perhaps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we're always trying to reach out to new people to come join us. I mean, uh, Connoisseur Media is one of them. You guys have been great with us the past couple of years. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have Hub Trucking helps us out. Okay. You know, and... Um, King Cullen, King Cullen and Beth Page Federal. You know, they typically come in as sponsors to our walk. Um, that's one of our major community events where we kind of look to um, go beyond the parishes to support the mission. Um, and, and, that's, and that in our golf outing, that's a more corporate event, which usually takes place in May. So let's talk a little bit about the walk that you have coming up on September 20th. Yes, so it's the Friends of the Poor Walk. It takes place at Bethpage State Park on, as you said, Saturday, September 20th. And all of the proceeds turn back to the mission. Um, We've welcomed a lot of different sponsors at that walk. Like I said, King Cullen, Bethpage Federal, I think Astoria Federal has been involved with us as well. And um, we also welcome outside groups. We have a significant number of Girl Scouts participating this year. Um, And it raises awareness about poverty on Long Island, but it also raises money. So it's a dual purpose. And this this is a national event that's held across the country on the same day. And we're very fortunate on Long Island that the past couple of years we've had the biggest walk in the country. Yeah, so. yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. And how, um, how much do you see this event raise typically ballpark off the top of your head? Uh, $125,000. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. And all of that goes right back, like you said, Terry, into right. the mission so that you can continue to provide the resources that you do. Exactly. Right. Uh, if somebody wants to get involved in the walk, is it is it a three-mile walk? Is it a one-mile walk? It's a 5K, 5K. Okay. along Bethpage State Park. Can uh, people run as well? They can run. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, it's not a timed event. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's a great family event. We have popcorn. We have music. We have face painting. We have ice cream. You know, it's just, it's good fellowship. It's really good fellowship. And, you know, we have a walk website specifically, um, okay, www. FOP Friends of the Poor Walk dot org and they could register right on um, by clicking dias- the Diocese of Rockville Center or again they can call the office right. and we can register for them. Are you accepting uh, registrations day of or is it something that you have to be pre registered for? Um, well, we prefer pre-registration, so then they can get all the goodies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, like the T-shirt and the water bottle. Some people um, need an incentive sometimes. They exactly. Like right. Exactly. <laughs> um, and you also mentioned a golf outing. What does that look like each year? Uh, that's held, traditionally held like the first uh, Monday, second Monday of May. And uh, it, it's really great. Again, uh, we've had some great honorees. We had uh, Tom Galata, and then we had... Uh, 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 Susan Kelly from Teresa Kelly, I'm sorry, from uh, Flushing Bank. Uh, so we've had some people from the community step up to help us out with that. This last one, we sold it out. It was a great day. Uh, it's up at the Tam O'Shanta Club every year. And it's just, uh, again, following the same thing about the walk. It's, uh, it's just about sharing time with people. And uh, yes, we are making money, but you have good friends coming together and you spend some time together. And we're always. Uh, inviting new friends to come join us. It's a great day. And it's all in the spirit, no pun intended, of helping those in need. Yes. Mm -hmm. Terry Zenobio, I just want to ask you on a personal level, obviously this is something that you're very passionate about, that you've been involved with. What made you decide to 
be more involved with St. Vincent de Paul of Long Island. Was there kind of that defining moment for you where you said, this is what I'm supposed to be doing? Well, you know, it's funny that you asked that, Leanne, because I actually found the job announcement in the church bulletin. Not many people can say that. So it was kind of meant to be. Um, and I really, I, I'm a social worker by trade, and it just kind of brought all of the skills that I've kind of acquired over my professional year into one place. But it, it's personal, too, because it's your faith, and it's living your faith. So it's, it's a fun place to be, I have to say, every day. And what's been one of your most memorable moments so far? Besides um, working with I us. I was going to say, working with these guys. <laughs> and, and this moment right now on the radio. I was waiting for it. Which is still. Clearly. Uh, <laughs> it definitely is true. You know, I think it's just um, actually going to the conference meetings and just being a witness to the work um, that the volunteers are doing because they bring such passion, such dedication. We have, we have people that have been Vincentians for almost 50 years. Who commits like that? Right. You know, it's, it's pretty remarkable how people put themselves out there. And James Claffey, I'm going to ask the same questions of you as far as, um, you know, what made you get involved and what's been, you know, the most rewarding thing for you so far. Well, it's, it's really a natural fit. I mean, I grew up in a, in a parish staffed by Vincentian priests, in other words, followers of St. Vincent de Paul. So I've sort of been in the Vincentian family, so to speak, my entire life. And so this just makes all kinds of good sense to me. Vincent, St. Vincent de Paul is, for the Catholic Church, the father of the poor, the patron of charity. And he's the patron of our society. And I've always found in Vincent sort of uh, the, my window in the world. The way I analyze things is through the lens of what Vincent th would think. Mm -hmm. So it's a really natural fit for me. And then Thomas Abadi, same question for you. Yeah, I, I worked in the corporate world for many years, and, uh, you know, you did the 60 hours a week like everybody else, and this opportunity came up, and I said, you know some uh, instead of working for stockholders, I'm going to go work for people who could use some help. So and how, that, that's quite a change. Yeah. So yes. how have, um, would you, uh, you never look back type of thing, or? No, I'm sorry, I didn't do it sooner. <laughs> you know, uh, I really am. Uh, you know, it's funny because you, you go back, and I didn't even know it. My father was a Vincentian. And I never made the connection until after I came came here and ran into some of the people that knew him. Uh -huh. I said, you know, you know, we used to work with your father, you know, like, yeah. and they explained it to me. I, I didn't even know my father passed away when I was younger. Right. So this and, is almost yeah. kind of you kind know, of like coming home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that you put it that way. Yeah. It's the Society of Saint Vincent de Paul of Long Island. It's volunteer based. Um, and that's pretty much, I would say, the driving force and what right. keeps mm -hmm. you uh, being able to help the people that you do. If somebody wants to volunteer, is just interested in learning a little bit more, how can they get in touch? It's that same number. It's one-stop shopping, 516-822-3132. Or the website. Or the website. Um, but they can ask to speak with any one of us, and, you know, we'd be happy. I think the thing that is so nice about the agency is we're not huge. We're small. We're intimate. We're personal. And we'd be happy to have you come in and just sit, have a cup of coffee, and we can talk to you, you know, about what we're doing. That's Terry Zanobio. She's the conference coordinator for St. Vincent de Paul of Long Island. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, James Claffey, who is the director of programs and conference concerns for St. Vincent de Paul. If somebody wants to get involved in the annual Friends of the Poor walk on September 20th, what's the best way to do that? The best way is probably to call in or to sign up through the website. But, uh, yeah, the, we, we welcome people to the walk. That's for sure. And they'll, and they'll enjoy it. Like Terry said, it's a real family event. It's really fun. You know, it's, it's, there's music, and, and it's really just a great day. And we also want to thank Thomas Abadi, the executive director for St. Vincent de Paul of Long Island, for joining us this morning. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I'm Leanna Carlson for Connoisseur Media Long Island. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Island Outlook.